This next story takes us to the heart of London, Threadneedle Street to be exact, home of the Bank of England. The bank itself and its surrounding area has been the site of many paranormal experiences for many people over the years, and at least part of its very foundations probably has a lot to do with this. Bank Underground Station lies a few feet away southwest of the building, and like many other underground stations in the city, it was built on old burial grounds, known as plague pits, which once held thousands of dead bodies, victims of the plague, which date back some 300 years or more. In fact, the ticket office at Bank Station used to be the location of an old crypt, part of the Mary Woolnoth's church, which was disturbed in order to make way for the building. The bodies that once lay there were exhumed in 1900. It's uncertain whether this particular story concerns one of the souls disturbed at the bank ticket office. One moderately reliable source, which I will talk about later, suggests that it does, but other stories surrounding the individual I'm going to talk about today puts her final resting place well clear of the Bank of England and the bank station. Either way, the story of the Black Nun, like my previous tale of William Terrace, begins above ground. On November 2, 1811, a London man by the name of Philip Whitehead was brought before a judge at the Old Bailey and sentenced to death. His crime? A forgery of a cheque at his place of employment, the Bank of England. In the early 19th century, this was a crime punishable by death, and he was hanged in 1812, aged 36. I have found during the making of this video that some sources have Philip Whitehead's first name as Paul. In fact, there is no record of Philip Whitehead ever being tried at the Old Bailey. There was, however, a Paul Whitehead, who had been tried and sentenced to death for forgery in the same year. The original documents of his trial even refer to him as Paul Whitehead. So in conclusion to this, I personally think that for some reason, the name was changed from Paul to Philip but for the sake of keeping to the legend people are most familiar with, I will refer to him as Philip. A man of aspirations, Philip Whitehead was determined to live a luxurious life among the high-waged bankers of the city, and he did, along with his sister Sarah. Together they lived the high life for a few years, that is until the lifestyle eventually caught up with Philip and the debts began to mount up. In attempts to rid himself of the financial burden, and to continue his lavish living, Philip Whitehead unwisely turned to gambling as a method of making extra money. He soon spiralled into more debt, but his beloved sister, however, was completely unaware of the trouble her brother was in. She went on living the good life, whilst her brother, too proud to admit the financial shortfallings, kept it all a secret from her believing that it would all come back to him in due course. This didn't happen however, and one day a friend of Whitehead's suggested that he forge a cheque at the bank where he worked. Now desperate for a way out of the mess he had created, Philip took the advice of his friend and stole £87 by way of forgery. A meagre amount today, but the modern equivalent of almost £3,000. He was soon found out and arrested, although his sister was still unaware of the horrible twist of fate that had befallen her sibling. Her brother's crime and subsequent death was kept from her, and acting on Philip's behalf, his friends moved Sarah to their home just off Fleet Street. On the day of his execution, Philip made sure that the impressionable Sarah was well clear of the vicinity, so that she would not be present to hear the bell tolls as her brother approached the hangman's noose. When she eventually returned home, she entered the Bank of England, asking where her brother was, as she hadn't seen or heard from him for so long. She was lied to many times, assured that he was well, but absent. That is until one day a tactless clerk of the bank informed Miss Whitehead in no uncertain terms 
of her brother's indiscretions and that it had rightly cost him his life. On discovering the truth, Sarah's mind could not comprehend what had happened. She became increasingly unstable and mentally unwell. In a disturbing exhibition of denial, she returned to the bank daily, always asking, has anyone seen my brother? Due to her obvious distress, no one at the bank or anywhere else took it upon themselves to repeat the horrible truth to poor Sarah, and the reply given was always the same. Not today, madam. She became known to the bank's employees and regular customers as Rouge El Noir, or more commonly, the Black Nun. This was due to her unusual attire, a black dress and a black veil worn over her face. It's believed that the Bank of England took pity on her at first, and on occasion she was handed sums of money on entering the building on account of her misfortune. Some sources say that to console her, she was given a room at the bank and on occasion even food. But day after day the distraught woman continued to loiter outside the building on Threadneedle Street before entering and again asking anyone who would listen if they'd seen her beloved Philip. The bank's employees soon grew tired of Sarah Whitehead's constant visits though and were put on alert whenever she entered the building. By now it was thought that their good nature was being taken advantage of. This is where the story once again becomes unclear. Some sources state that after learning of her brother's death, Sarah Whitehead visited the bank every day for the next 25 years. That is until her death. Author Peter Underwood even wrote that it was 40 years. This sounds excessive. Would this woman really return every single day for 25 years? Others claim that by 1818 her mental condition had worsened her manner had become aggressive, and she accused the bank of hiding money, money that was rightfully hers. This version of events states that she was paid a large sum of money on the promise that she would never return. She agreed, and at least in life, did not return. However, one day Sarah saw the owner of the bank whilst he went about his business at the stock exchange. She approached him, called him a villain and a robber, and demanded £2,000, at which time he handed her half a crown and told her to be on her way. She oddly accepted the money, thanked him and left. Sarah Whitehead passed away 25 to 30 years after her brother's execution, putting her death somewhere between 1937 and 1942. She was thought to be 19 at the time of Philip's death. If this is true, she would have been between 44 and 49 at the time of her own death, although some claim she was as old as 60. Since her passing, there have been sightings of a woman in black inside the bank itself, along Threadneedle Street, at the nearby cemetery, and within Bank Underground Station. Some people have even claimed that the woman approached them with her eyes cast down, asking if they had seen her brother. Some of the sightings were by people who said they knew nothing of the legend. Other sightings were by small groups of people who all claimed to have witnessed her at the same time. One such sighting was by an American tourist who said he was approached and asked the same question. When the man told her that she must have him confused with someone else, she appeared dejected, turned away, and followed two other people who had just passed by. The tourist went on his way, but turned momentarily to take another look at the woman in black. She was nowhere to be seen. Probably the most famous sightings happened within the walls of the Bank of England's court garden. These stories are numerous, but one in particular stands out. The bank's gallery overlooks the gardens through a series of large windows. It's through one of these windows that two men during the 1970s caught the sight of a woman dressed in black, staggering along the garden path. They described her motions as hesitant, seemingly without purpose, and walking as if blind. They say that she then fell to her knees and began frantically striking the stone slabs with clenched fists and shaking her head from side to side in a dramatic fashion, as if experiencing profound grief. 
she then allegedly vanished from sight. Interestingly, the stone paths of the court gardens are made up from old gravestones from St. Christopher Le Stock's former cemetery. As I've previously mentioned, this story varies depending on which source you rely on. Many sources say that Sarah was buried in the churchyard of St. Christopher Le Stock's just behind the bank, but as the church was demolished in 1782 to make way for an extension of the bank, this is impossible. Some people say that the bodies exhumed from St. Christopher Le Stock's church were moved to nearby Nunhead Cemetery in 1867. But the bank's very own Inside the Bank of England document from 2013 states that the dead were undisturbed until the 1930s when they were in fact moved to Nunhead Cemetery. Now I don't want to bore you with over analysis, but I do feel I need to at least try to make sense of all of the contradictions, so please bear with me. Seeing as Nunhead Cemetery was founded in 1840, and this year does coincide with the approximate year of Sarah's death, it is possible that she was originally buried there instead of having been moved there. Another version of events says that she was buried in the general vicinity of where the bank station now exists, and that her grave was disturbed during the station's construction. This scenario makes much more sense and fits in with what I was saying at the beginning of the video. Channel 5's documentary Ghosts of the Underground gives us details of a crypt at St. Mary Woolnoss Church, which was disturbed in order to make way for the bank station's ticket office. The documentary clearly states that many bodies were exhumed and relocated from the crypt in 1900 when the ticket office was built. Could it be that this was Sarah Whitehead's original resting place? If so, was she moved to Nunhead Cemetery from here rather than from St. Christopher of Stocks, as so many say? There appears to be no clear answer. In conclusion to all of this, I think it's likely that her original resting place was the former Mary Walnoss crypt at the bank station ticket office. That being said, let's move on to the haunting of bank station. Even though the Black Nun is vaguely associated with the bank station, reported accounts are far fewer than at the Bank of England. One such account comes from a station worker at the Bank and Monument stations. His name is Chris Archibald, and he told Channel 5 during the filming of the aforementioned documentary that he had seen an old woman on a CCTV monitor at the bank station at 2am, long after the station had closed. On investigation, he found that she was indeed stood in the corridor. According to him, she looked up at him, cast her eyes downward, turned away and slowly walked around a nearby corner. He then says that he ran down the corridor with enough speed to easily catch up with the slow-moving woman before she could move out of sight. But as he turned the same corner, she was nowhere to be seen. A suggestion was made by the producers that this was a case regarding Sarah Whitehead. But Mr Archibald didn't mention that she wore black attire, so it may have been another spirit altogether. Either way, he said of his experience, Being the sceptic that I am, it will stay with me for the rest of my life as to why I can't seem to come up with a logical explanation. There was an alleged sighting of Sarah Whitehead or the Black Nun as late as 2001 by a commuter travelling from Liverpool Street to Bank. These later sightings are far less well known and have little if any credibility. Sarah Whitehead's name has been and will for now remain more synonymous with the Bank of England and Threadneedle Street. The bank itself is also known as the Old Lady of Threadneedle Street. Some believe that this name is attributed to the legend of Sarah Whitehead. <laughs> 